wide till seven. South at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. A lot of lightning in large hail. We've had wind gust clocks just over 50 miles an hour. Outdoor sirens are still the fastest and most effective method to warn a community of an emergency. The city of Columbia is upgrading many of the 68 sirens it is responsible for. We have a number of sirens that are up to 40 years old, and we've been trying to replace them on a routine or regular basis, but we just haven't been able to get a lot done during any given budget year. So in 2005, there was a public safety bond issue that went before the citizens of uh, Columbia, and they had voted to replace 21 of the outdoor warning centers that we have that need to be replaced. The new sirens have battery backup in case of a loss of electricity. Their sound carries farther and at the same time is easier on the ears when close by because it broadcasts at a lower pitch than the old sirens. We always use a 5,000 foot radius for the sirens for planning and placement of them. However, on any given day they can be heard further than that. There's a lot of environmental conditions that have to be taken into place as far as the terrain, landscape, um, actual placement, physical structures that might be um, inhibiting them. Something as simple as wind direction can change the distance that these sirens can be heard when a person is outside. Since the new sirens cover a larger area, some are being relocated to growth areas. That can be the responsibility of the city to recognize these needs and add or increase siren protection coverage or what I would like to see Irvin suggest at one point in time is that any new developments that go into areas the developers perhaps can be responsible to some extent for placement of sirens. We have several developers that have already done that in our area here. The sirens that we're talking about are technically called outdoor warning sirens. Those sirens are designed to be heard outside. Their intention is, is that when people hear them, they find out what's going on. It then becomes their responsibility. Outdoor warning sirens can be used for a number of different things. They can be used for uh, severe weather, they can be used for hazard material spills, some type of a chemical issue, whatever it may be that requires a large area population notification. And anytime someone suspects that the sirens have been activated, whether it be um, during bad weather or bright clear blue skies, they need to listen to their local media broadcasters and find out what's going on. If it's an accidental type of uh, activation, the media will know that and be able to relay that information as well. If it's something that people are supposed to either take shelter, evacuate, whatever the message is, the media are the folks that's going to be able to provide them with that answer. We definitely don't want people calling 911 to find out what's going on because if it is a true event or a true disaster, they're going to be busy handling emergency phone calls and not being able to share information. Bad weather triggers most siren events, which can happen any time of the day or night. You can look at um, prime season for tornadoes to be from March through June. They can occur all year round. On the south side of Columbia several years ago, a tornado struck in the middle of the night. A lot of people rely on outdoor warning sirens to be heard inside. And if they're able to hear these sirens inside, that's actually an added benefit or bonus to these sirens. Their true intent and purpose is to be heard outside. And what we really recommend for people that are indoors is to have a NOAA weather radio, uh, which is activated for any type of a situation that requires, again, a large area mass notification of the population. Including Columbia and Jefferson City. If you hear an outdoor warning siren, find shelter immediately. If possible, once inside, you should turn on a television or radio to find out further information. Outdoor warning sirens are tested at noon on the first Wednesday of each month. The test may be postponed in the event of threatened weather. 